and part two. Uh, the reason we do this experiment in two parts, because that's the schedule of the lab manager you know usually gives us and why does it have to be too hard because crystallization takes time especially the prismatic crystals that needs to form for this experiment it takes at least one week yes at least one week time so um, we are going to have more than one week time and the time that i actually did the experiment i left them to to stay for more than one week for, to make sure that the crystals form, uh, the prismatic crystals form, they have to form slowly and it takes, it takes time to get proper yield. So um, I understand, I checked with the other class that some classes is like they are, you are in the middle of the chapter, chapter five and others. Is there anyone here that chapter five or stereochemistry has not? been covered in lecture or you haven't started yet? Um, in my class, I have Dr. Lowry. Um, mm. We're still in chapter three. He's been moving kind of slow for some reason. We've oh, kind yeah. of covered okay. stereochemistry, but we haven't done a whole lot of it. Okay. Um, the stereochemistry, the way that the, the, like determining configuration uh, chapter is chapter five, and that's what Professor Larry, he's very good at that explain, explaining that. But we need to finish. <laughs> we need to. You need to get to that chapter first before yeah. you can finish it. So um, anyway, um, I uh, second week of the of the experiment seven. I usually um, go over the polarimeter, and that's basically on the video. Um, if you want to watch it like over the spring break, that's that's an option. Now that the experiment is recorded, we could have done like in one week because we just have part one, part two video. But I wanted to keep the schedule the way that lab, you know, the call, the department gave gave us. So we have two weeks for experiment seven. There would be no lab report for next week. So next week is the spring break. So there is no lab report when you come back on the March 11th, because the lab report for experiment seven, it should be combination of part one and part two. The lab report for experiment seven is due March 18. But if you want to write it earlier during the spring break, you can watch both part, part A, part, part one, part two of the experiment seven. and uh, write your lab report it's okay um, i will go over the entire experiment on the march 11th when we come back so we are going to um to just talk about a pair of enantiomers which are the the mirror images of the same molecule you have the mirror images um, there is a um, typo here. I have the notes in my in my paper, and I have to correct that. I will make sure that one is R, one is S, and I have to correct that. So if you see something in that nature, um, and there was one plus minus sign that it should be, yes, I have the notes for that one. So if you notice something, please let me know um, because. I'm going to through the next edition and I want to make the corrections. So the uh, other uh, point that I just want to mention about the technique that we are using here is called resolution. Basically, when you have a plus minus, that means you have a uh, you have plus minus means mixture of R and S mixture of the two enantiomers. The problem with separation of enantiomers is that uh, when it comes to separation, we have used like difference in boiling point for liquids and use distillation. Different in solubility, then use recrystallization. And different for acidity, then you can use extraction. If one is acid, one is neutral, or the other one is base. Uh, difference in polarity, then you can use chromatography. When it comes to pair of enantiomers, there is no difference between the two 
um, no physical property, uh, difference in physical property of the pair of enantiomers. The only difference that we have there is the rotation of plane polarized light, which is not something physical that you can use to separate the compounds. So the solution that was found is to use the only difference that these compounds they have in chemical property or chemical reaction is how they react with another chiral compound. So if you have a chiral compound, pure chiral compound, and you mix it with R and S or plus and minus of the amine, you change that to pair of diastomers. Diastomers are the compounds that they are isomers, but they are not mirror image. And if they are not mirror image, they are not enantiomers anymore. If they are not enantiomer anymore, that means that they don't have same physical property. One is soluble, one is not soluble. One has needle-like shape of crystals. The other one is prismatic type of crystals. So they have different physical properties. And since they have different physical property, now we can use the techniques we have learned like filtration and others, extraction, and you separate them. When you separate them, then you can you can go back to original compound by like uh, adding a reagent to cleave off the piece that you brought in. So you are going to cleave off basically the tartaric acid and you end up with the 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 part that you wanted for the uh, for the amine. This it, the technique is called resolution, and it's not always hundred percent purification, um, but if you do this experiment like two times, um, then you will get better better yield of the uh, or lower higher excess of an atomic excess or something that uh, the definitions that you would use. Um, there was one question, polarimeter, I show that in the video, and it's better in the part two of the video, experiment seven part two video, if you watch it, um, you can you can look at this, and we will talk about the polarimeter also next um, meeting. A calculation of the enantiomeric axis, the simple way of calculation, I have it here on page 88, you can use as a sample for your calculation. If you don't have questions today, I'm going to make the meeting today short. And then, uh, yes, just like successive extraction, exactly. Um, so in this case, also is like success if you have to do it. But the fact that it takes so long, um, that's why most of the products that you see, they have like a plus minus or they tell you like that, okay, you could take Tylenol, if one doesn't work, take two, because maybe just the S enantiomer, it's taking care of your headache, and if there's anything of the R, is not, um, is not very, um, no, is not uh, effective. So they just tell you, take between one and two, don't take more than eight for 24 hour. So you have the, the problem there because we don't know the other part, how much is going to damage your body. But at the same time, we understand because it's, it's a tedious, it's very, very unique way of separation, and it takes a lot of time. You you see in just one of these experiments, you have to wait like two weeks for the crystals to form. So it's not that easy. But successive um, resolution is going to give you more pure product. Questions? Um, I have a question regarding what you were saying about the uh, the crystal formation. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of relates to the one of the pre-lab questions, so um, to the extent that you're able to answer this. Um, in the in the book, it's uh, or in the, uh, the manual, it says that those needle-like crystals, I think it's step um, four? Yeah, mm -hmm. step four says that those needle-like crystals contain both uh, diastereomers or both uh, isomers is that just because of is that just due to the fact that both exist in the solution and that once you remove the um the sorry i'm trying to figure out which one i'm trying yeah for the the negative uh amine crystal crystals from the prisms once you mm -hmm. remove those with the 
crystals that form from what's left still be needle-like crystals? The one that we like to keep is the prismatic right. crystals. Right, but, but what I'm saying is once you remove those prismatic crystals, if you were to allow what's left in there, because there's still an isomer left in that solution after you remove the crystals, if you were to allow that those remaining that remaining uh, molecule to crystallize, would it still form needle-like crystals in that case? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. After you remove the prismatic ones, yes, they would they would make the needle-like. But they would be pure. They wouldn't be mixed between the two. The two. Uh, since the, the first yes. time resolution is not 100%, then you might have some impurity, but that would be like impurity. Yeah, it's not yeah. supposed to be there. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Um, any other questions you might have? So what do you think should be added to the manual? Hi, Dr. Mamari. So one thing that I did notice was at the very end of the experiment on step 17, it mentioned uh -huh. that we have to calculate the enantiomeric access. And I believe that there is an equation for enantiomeric access. But when I was looking through the book, I didn't notice an equation for the enantiomeric access. I did notice one for the optical purity. And um, let's see here, I'm just... Okay, optical purity and enantiomeric access is the same thing. Oh, they are? Okay. Yes, yes. And then when you're doing the calculation, I mean, this uh, 40.3 is the true value. So the observed uh, specific rotation should be divided by 40.3. That is something that I should, I should uh, probably mention it somewhere else also that this is the standard is the literature value but um, anatomic excess and the percent purity is the same thing okay uh, because i was actually just researching online and i know that the i i saw that the optic purity and we did this in in class and lecture i know that the optic purity would be the experimental specific rotation found divided by the known specific rotation multiplied by 100. Uh -huh. And then the enantiomeric access, when I did my research, I was looking at different equations and apparently there's a- I mean, it's not, but remember, it's science. It's not the, uh, just single equation that it can take you, but you can calculate the optical purity to get the, the um, enantiomeric access. And then from the enantiomeric access, you can find out the percent for each. And that sample calculation is shown on page 88. So this is the, the experimental rotation, mm -hmm. specific rotation over the literature value that gives you the, the anatomic excess or the optical purity. And when you have that value, you can set up this equation to find percent for each one. Okay, I see. So they're both related. So the optical purity is just the experimental divided by the actual times 100. But when you calculate the percentage of each, we get the enantiomeric excess. Is that correct? Um, it's correct. But at the same time, what is enantiomeric excess? Let's say if you have, if you have uh, a mixture of R and S, that one rotates the light to the right side and the other one rotates to the left side. Right. Now, if if the rotation is going to, let's say, happen to 40 degree, but is not happening to 40 degree, it stays at like 30, what, why is staying at 30 and not going all the way to 40? It's because there's some mixture of the other one that rotates the light in the opposite direction and brings it back. I so, see. So, so would the enantiomeric excess be the... It's the overall rotation. Okay. It's like what is being rotated by, by both enantiomer or by mixture of the enantiomers. And they are working in opposite with respect to each other, in opposite direction with respect to each other. 
right? Like, let's say you have, an, just for an example, like, let's say you have an, an antiomer and you find the optic purity to be 60%. Mm -hmm. Then you know that the remaining 40%, that 20% would be positive and 20% would be negative. Yes. So how would... No, 80%. No, no. 80%, if, if the optical purity is 60%, that means that uh, originally you would have have and that's coming from negative then originally that means you had like 80 percent of the negative and 20 percent of the positive 20 percent of the positive uh, cancelled 20 percent of the negative from the 80 percent what is left is 60 percent right so because of the 60 percent you know that 20 let's say the 60% is positive, you know that 20 would be positive, 20 would be negative, and then the total positive would be 80. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so are they basically the same thing or, or yes. is the, okay. It's the same thing. Excess of an antimeric and, and optical purity, it's the, it means the same thing. Okay. Got it. Perfect. Any other questions? If you don't have questions, I'm going to call for attendance, and then I uh, hope that you enjoy your um, spring break. And uh, if you want to write your lab report, as I said, during the spring break, if you have nothing better to do, you can watch both parts of the, the, the recording and write the, your um, report. And, um, we have no reports due for this experiment until the 18, March 18. And I'm going to use most of my spring break trying to catch up on my grading, especially the lab, pre lab quizzes that I have not graded um, and that, you know, as I wanted, but I will, you know, use my time to grade it during the uh, spring break. But, uh, let me go with the attendance, Tarek. Thank you. Um, Deja. Thank you. Rosie. I think Rosie. Um, Ashana. Thank you. Elizabeth. Thank you. Jennifer. Alexis. Kylie, Caleb, Valentina, Valentino, sorry, um, Ashley, that's here, Daniel, Mariah, okay. Mariah, were you absent last class or you didn't reply when I called your name? Catania, thank you. Perfect. Anifo, Anam, Sammy, Cassandra. Um, Craig, Antonia, Antonia, okay. As I said in the past for assignments, I have a late submission policy, and if you missed an assignment, you can submit your assignment, but have your assignment ready because I don't want to leave the assignment folder open for no reason for too long. And uh, email me that you have your assignment ready to turn in, 
um, then I will I will make sure to open the assignment. When I open the assignment, it may not show on calendar because I only opened the, the end date I extended. Uh, you have to click on the assignment, then it will accept like late submission. Late submission has late grade, um, but it's much better than not turning in. So in case if you have to submit any assignment late, please um, let me know via email. But let me know when you have the assignment um, ready so I could open it for you. Okay, if you don't have any questions, um, you may start watching the part one and part two of the uh, experiment. That's your choice. Or you can wait until after spring break to watch the part two of the experiment. Um, thank you so much and have a nice day. Enjoy your spring break. I will see you in two weeks. Dr. Mamari, I just have one question about the the syllabus and the grading. So, sure. right. So, I believe your syllabus says that lab reports are worth ten points, and then the notebooks are worth three points, and the quizzes should be worth six points. Correct? Based on the syllabus, yes. Okay. I was just making sure because uh, right now. And I'm sure you're going to change it when you do all the grading. The quizzes are they count out out of ten. I can do two things. I can I can get them to ten points, and then at the end, when I'm doing the calculation, uh, I add them all up and I do sixty percent of it. Or I can change the maximum grade to six, and then it does calculate the out of six, like what you got out of six. But um, since when I pre was preparing the quiz, I, I actually prepared it out of 10 points. It's going to be easier to grade it like that. And then, uh, then I will do the calculation at the end and I just count 60% of the, of the grade, the, the total grade. Okay. But at the end, I will make sure to follow the syllabus when I'm calculating the final grade. Sounds good. I just wanted to to make sure and, you know, just see if there was a change in the syllabus or any of the grading policies. I just wanted to make sure. And I'm sure you'll do the same thing for a few of the lab reports because I'm, I'm looking at a few of them now. No, no the, the lab reports, but as I'm grading, uh, like before, just before I grade it, I change it to 10 points. So then I have I have less problem at okay. the end of the yes. Got it. Because a few of them right now are out of 25, but like you said, you said that you would change them. And but the ones that are graded, they are out of 10, right? Yes. Yes. When as I'm grading, as I start grading, I make sure that is out of 10, so it's less, um, you know, calculation for me at the end. I used to give it out of 25, and then for the same reason, it 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 kind of over. Uh, estimates the average in progress or if what someone is missing then it takes like 25 points off it's easier if if it reflects the syllabus and I might change the grades for all of the the quizzes for like next semester to make it all uh, out of six so it does say what what syllabus says too okay yeah sounds good I just wanted to to make sure because I know some professors like to change the syllabus a little bit. No, no, no. I'm not changing syllabus. So. Okay. Perfect. Alrighty. Well. And your lab report has more grade than the, than the pre-lab quizzes. Yeah, I noticed. It's because it's three points for the notebook and six for the quiz. It's ten for the for the lab. And the final yes. is worth like twenty one percent because it's like fifty mm -hmm. points. Yes, yeah. and that's why I I I give chance for late submissions for assignments is going to help the students more uh, than the quizzes. And since I give the answers during the pre-lab uh, discussion for all the questions for the quiz, I don't wanna, you know, I wanna be fair. Of course, right. And just out of curiosity, what's your policy? I don't, it's not gonna happen to me. I, at least I hope not. What's your policy regarding late submissions? Would it be like half credit or how would that work? No, no, I take like 10 points, 10% uh, uh, off. Okay. Uh, 
if it's if it's reasonably you know uh, late like if it's less than one week i take like 10 percent. i don't take too many if it's more than a week or so then more points will be taken all right yeah sounds good okay. and all right, I think those were all my questions. And and this week we didn't have the quiz. That's going to be for when we come back, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. Because I, I want to give a chance for students to watch the video and hopefully the lecture covers more about the stereochemistry and then you take the quiz, yes. So would that mean that all the quizzes that we have left are going to be delayed one week? No. The, uh, the experiment seven, experiment seven is a two week uh, experiment. So um, it's for February 25th and March 11th. We are doing experiment seven. Okay. I you, see. Yeah, you're still taking the quiz before you do the experiment seven. Okay, I see. And then everything goes back to normal where we have the quiz and the notebook due. Same and, day. Okay, same way. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to make. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a two-week experiment, I didn't want to make everything do in one one day, and then the other day you have nothing to do. And also, it gives time for lecture to catch up. Of course, yeah. yeah. And we just we just finished chapter five like today, so that that's was perfect. Good. That, that's yeah. good. That's good. All right. Well, I appreciate it as always, Dr. Mamari. I'll see you after spring break. Have a fantastic spring break. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.